Hi, I'm Rob. Welcome to my first stock analysis video. Today we are looking at Greencoat UK Wind, not to be confused with Greencoat Renewables or any other Greencoat venture. Here is a quick overview of the company. They own and invest in wind energy. They currently own 38 wind farms across the four nations of the UK. They seek to provide investors with a growing dividend, which is currently at 7.1p per share yielding around 5.5% at the current share price of 129p. They use excess cash flow after the payments of dividends to help increase the portfolio's value. They have a market cap of £2.5 billion, putting them in the FTSE 250. Here is a simple overview of the company's investment plans. All this data on the screen is from the IPO in 2013 up to the end of 2020. Its portfolio of wind farms has generated £621 million in cash, with which £458 million had been paid to shareholders via a quarterly dividend. They then use the remaining cash flows after the dividend payments, along with cash from equity raises and taken on debt to fund acquisitions of more wind farms to increase the portfolio's value. Its current operating portfolio consists of 38 wind farms, with a net power capacity of 1,173 megawatts. This has increased from 127 megawatts at its IPO. Currently, 70% of its farms are onshore, with the other 30% being offshore. They have set a cap of 40% for offshore wind farms to not exceed this mark. In 2020, they have acquired four new wind farms and have made commitments to two more that will be completed at the end of 2022 and the start of 2023. These acquisitions and commitments continues to increase the gross asset value of the company. Now let's look at the stock's key portfolio metrics. They have a gross asset value of 3.2 billion pounds. This is then reduced to 2.2 billion when debt is included, which is obviously taken off the gross value. The net asset value per share stands at 122.2 pence per share. This is the net asset value of the overall company divided by the number of shares outstanding. With a current share price of 129p as of April 2021, this creates a premium of just under 7.5% from the share price to the net asset value. A premium of 7.5% may seem high, but this is currently well below the 12-month average and is generally much higher over the past five years with the rare exception caused by short-term drops in share price. As seen by the difference in gross and net asset value, UK Wind have £1.1 billion in outstanding borrowing as of the end of 2020. This is equivalent to 33% of its gross asset value. This 33% debt, also known as gearing, was reduced to 28% in February 2021, following an equity raise. These equity raises issue more shares in exchange for extra funding. Gearing allows the company to increase its acquisitions, so the more debt they can take on, they can acquire more wind farms and increase the cash that is generated. Um, but with more debt comes more risk, and the company has set a limit to 40% of the gross asset value um, as debt they can take on, similar to the amount they want to expose themselves to offshore wind farms. They've capped it at 40%. So how did this £3.2 billion portfolio perform in 2020? It generated just under 3,000 gigawatt hours of power. This was 3% under its budget, also known as the predictions for the year. Its gross asset value grew 36% and it paid its targeted dividend of 7.1p per share, costing £118.7 million from its £145 million cash generation. This gives a dividend cover of 1.2 times. So how has a company grown over the past five years? Its share price has grown 18.4%, which is closely linked to the net asset value per share. Shareholders' return was 54.1% when dividends were included in the share price growth. The company continues to invest as it outperforms inflation. As you can see by the second graph, that the net asset value continued to increase 
with inflation. And this doesn't include the dividends. So at worst, you are just increasing with inflation. But as you can see by the green line, it's increasing higher than inflation. But then when you add on the dividends on top, that's what got you the 54.1% return over the past five years, which is obviously over 10% per year. As mentioned, the company pays out a 7.1p dividend in 2020. So how much has this grown over the past five years? The growth of dividend payments over the past five years was around 2.41%. And dividends have been well covered by the cash generations and are expected to grow with inflation now with every investment comes a wide range of risk green coat uk wind can perform negatively based on the following factors a low wind speed because they solely operate wind farms a low wind speed can decrease the amount of cash generated in a year however the uk wind speed is fairly consistent and hasn't deviated much from the 10-year average, as you can see by the graph. Now also, aging assets. So the older the wind farm, the more maintenance they require, which can reduce their performance, and the amount of cash will need to, more will need to go on expenses rather than it generating. However, its current portfolio is quite new and will continue to invest in younger farms which will decrease the average age of the farms, which will mitigate this risk of the aging assets. There's also a risk of share dilution. As the company issues more shares, as it did in February 2021, it seeks to raise more money, but this, however, decreases your holding in the, in the company, potentially decreasing dividends as they have to pay to more and more people. As they issue more shares, the dividends then have to be paid to those new shareholders, which then spreads their cash more thinly, which could potentially decrease the overall amount you're paid. However, they do generally use the funds that they raise very well, and they seek to increase the value. Say they raise 100 million, they increase to make more money from that 100 million, um, and then pay that back to you as a shareholder. Um, so sometimes share dilutions can be seen as a negative, but if they use that cash positively, they can increase the amount of payments you're getting back in form as a dividend or increasing the net asset value. There's also a chance of a decreased support for wind power. Um, if they decrease support, it uh, could become less popular. There could be greater advances in other areas of energy sector. However, this is quite unlikely based on the UK government's current stance. Um, they're very committed to reducing emissions and they've stated multiple times that uh, wind energy will play a key role in this. Here are also some other variables to consider, which both include potential positive and negative effects on the net asset value. This includes things like inflation, the power prices. So if power prices go up, they make more money because they can without even increasing the amount of energy they generate, they can earn more money on the same amount. And also things like energy yield, which is the same as the wind speeds, um, they can generate more energy uh, based on the wind speed. So in April 2021, is Greencoat UK a good buy? Well, it currently provides a high dividend yield of around 5.5%. And at 7.1p target is expected to grow. It currently has a low premium to buy into the portfolio, with just 7.42% currently at the current share price. The net asset value should continue to grow with investments of its cash from free sources. The excess cash flow, as previously mentioned, the debt and other equity raises. Finally, although UK Wind has provided shareholders with a return of over 10% in the past five years. I don't see any chance of any massive gains to the portfolio as the share price is very closely linked to the net asset value, which isn't likely to increase dramatically in the short term. The share price over the short term has remained flat. Um, however, the premium is very variable. 
um, and it can potentially put a cap on the growth as although premium has been over 20% in the past, it isn't likely to go above that without further investment from the company, either using, like you said, the free sources of cash it has. So thank you for watching. I hope you find this helpful. I'm considering making more of these, and as I've enjoyed making this one, so please like the video if you have enjoyed.